Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com and today you're joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark for a real-time boat trip through a canal lock. So I'm going to throw in a few bits of commentary on this video to explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it and how I work a canal lock when I'm passing through them on my own with my 45 foot narrowboat here. I'm going to leave some sections with just nice calm peace and quiet so you can hear the roar of the water through the lock gates and the natu natural sounds of the engine as we pass into the lock and I'll throw in a few bits of POV footage from the stern as I turn the camera around to show you what it's actually like being on the back of a boat in a lock and hopefully that will be a nice calm video and give you possibly the the slight sense that you're stood here on board Abel's Ark with me as we pass through the lock together. So anyway, without further ado, let's get stuck into the boat video. Hang on, is there one thing to do before we do that? What's that noise I can hear in the background? Well, if I try and cleverly move the camera over my shoulder as one continuous shot, I am over the moon to say that I have now got, after my first ever attempt at soldiering, my first working oval of my N-Gage model railway layout. Now there's a huge amount of work to be done on this. The work hasn't even begun in reality. So I hope you'll check out my other YouTube channel, Sort of Interesting Trains, link in the description, where you'll see me building scenery and buildings and just figuring out a nice track layout as well with a few extra bits in it. Anyway, without further ado now, onto the boating video. Let's get stuck in my friends. Right then my friends, what you're about to see is a good demonstration of just why it takes me so long to travel through a lock when I'm travelling on my own on board. And that's basically because of moments like this. We've got a lot of dead time now where the boat's not going to move at all for a minute or two because obviously if you're travelling alone it means that you've got to do everything yourself. So if I'm up there draining the lock and opening the lock gates and stuff like that I'm obviously not getting the boat any further to be in through the lock. Whereas, well, here just a little little POV shot from up at the lock gates here. You can see it was absolutely filled with leaves here. And of course you can see the motion of the water coming down towards these gates. And on the other side, where the water is at our level, all of the water rushing through there. But basically, if I had a friend on board with me at this point, then I would have probably got off the boat earlier, further up the canal walked ahead down to the lock itself or had them walk down to the lock and then, then open the lock gates so that I could just then fetch the boat straight into the lock whereas here obviously I've had to stop the boat completely to a standstill I've just opened the left hand lock gate had to walk all the way down the length of the lock over the front lock gate to get to the right hand side of the lock and then you're about to see me wind down the paddle on the right hand lock gate here before I then open the gate. The reason that I do it this way and I, uh, I wind the paddle down before opening the gate is because I find if there's a lot of debris in the lock and sticks and leaves, things like this, if you have got all of that trapped between the gate and the lock wall itself, as you're trying to use the mechanism, it can jam the, well, not jam it, but it can cause an obstruction and stop you being able to lower the paddle in an efficient way. So you can see here now, at this point, had I had somebody else on board to either stay on the boat and steer it straight into the lock, or had I myself have um, stayed on board and my friend opened the gates before I'd arrived at the boat, then we would have had potentially zero time. And I was speaking to somebody on a boat I was moored up with just a few days ago about this exact thing, how they'd got, between the two of them, a very efficient system where one would get off, open the gates, and over time they had basically learnt the timing so that they could very, very efficiently have the gates opening practically as the boat was ready to enter them. Whereas here, obviously now, it's been a couple of minutes where the boat hasn't moved whatsoever. And you can see it seems an awful long way um, when you're travelling like this. Just a side note here, it was an incredibly cold day today. It actually forecast potential snow. So I was wearing two coats, so that top coat isn't actually mine, but I was indeed alone when I was travelling through the lock here. So yeah, 
I think at this point we'll just have a little moment or two of the natural sounds as the engine kicks in and we get ready to uh, enter the lock. So as the boat is now entering into the lock, the first thing that you might notice is just how narrow it is. And you might notice on the top of the boat here, you can see just above the chimney cap and on the right hand side of the boat in a similar position, I've got two of the rubber fenders on the roof. And basically because the locks are so narrow, anything like that you want to lift up. And I myself on my previous boat had been wedged in locks on a couple of occasions and there's all sorts of terrible things that can happen if obviously a boat gets wedged in a lock and the water level starts to rise or it can literally get wedged in a lock at the top and as the water's drained out your boat can be suspended in mid-air above the water because the walls on some of them are that warped and tight if the boat can get pinned in place so always uh, with anything to do with locks definitely want to be very very sensible very cautious and not rush things. Look for things like that that you might uh, have overlooked and even once the boat's safely in the lock, don't think that, oh well, that's it. Because obviously as the boat rises or falls with the water level, the walls can be warped and they can tighten and pinch the boat at other places. As we look around now from the point of view on the stern here, you can see this lock isn't too deep. We've got this uh, gooey ladder that's been underwater for goodness knows how long. And obviously we've got the open lock gates, which I'm about to climb up the ladder off the boat and then close those gates. As I do so, you'll notice that the boat will start to creep forward because of the motion of the gates, I assume, just put, making a little bit of a flow in the water. So what you're about to see is basically now a very slow case of me going to the front lock gate where there's a paddle each side. I'm at this point going to go round and uh, shut the gate on the right hand side behind us. But then I'm going to come through to the, to the front of the lock. There's two paddles, one on either side, which I will raise very slowly because obviously again, if I'm doing this on my own, that means there isn't somebody on the boat while I'm letting water into the lock. So I don't want to let a huge amount of water in by raising the paddles really quickly in rapid succession. I'm just doing a few inches at a time and letting the water slowly come in and the water sl flow slowly build up so that if needs be, I can come and grab a rope on the top of the boat and then obviously stop it uh, surging forwards and going into the front lock gate or being pushed backwards into the back lock gates. You can see again a little POV shot here. You can see the boat's looking quite low down there because obviously we're 
well, when we're looking from the view on top of the boat here in the main picture, that's at our sort of feet level. So it seems like the boat is a lot lower in the lock, I think, when you're stood looking in than when you're stood on the boat looking up, if that makes sense. You're about to see probably the most iffy part of this entire video where I step onto the boat roof. Of course that's a huge potential slip hazard and the last thing you want to do is slip down between the roof of your boat and the top half of the cabin of your boat and the lock wall there. So I'm going to say don't be like me and don't do that. Um, I think had I have thought about it I would have had that rope maybe a little bit further back to throw up onto the side while the boat was still at the uh, low level of the water in the lock and again now you can see it's still just continuing this slow process of going raising the paddles coming back stopping the boat moving you can see because i'm doing it this slowly there's not much motion but when i was on my previous boat narrowboat tilly and i was going through one lock that two people came down and helped me with and it was one of the worst lock passages that I've ever done because they just naturally both raised the front paddles up and with Narrowboat Tilly being a 30 foot boat there was a huge amount of water rushing into the lock and with a smaller boat like that I obviously had a lot of room in the lock for the water even though I put it went straight into reverse the water pulled me forwards and clattered into the front lock gate Luckily there was no damage to anything apart from maybe some of my cups fell over indoors but it was one of those things that because they'd raised the paddles so quickly even with my engine in reverse trying to slow the boat down and as I say with the run up that the extra space a smaller boat in the lock can have it just allowed that momentum of the water to just pull me straight forwards and it was like I say the, the most embarrassing and the worst lock passage that I'd ever done yet it was one of the few times over the career of Dan Brown and Narrowboat Tilly that I actually had a full complement of help going through the locks because you can imagine if you've got three people then that means that you don't even have to have the one person doing the lock gates and things like that running around not running don't run um, but moving around from one side of the lock to the other to do the gates and the paddles you can just have one person each side of the lock controlling their gates and their paddles and obviously that's incredibly efficient.
Now what you're seeing here is me looking like I might be putting a bit of force into opening the front lock gate but basically at this point because I'm trying not to step in that huge puddle I'm only using one hand here and just leaning my weight onto the lock gate itself and you can see how it's literally just opening up nice and easy and once the water is level in the lock and on the top level of the canal there's obviously no huge amount of pressure from the top canal there pushing the lock gate closed when the water is a lot lower level on the inside of the lock and as you can see it's nice and easy and again you don't want to try and force it because that could end up damaging the lock gates and potentially cause all sorts of other trouble if you then have a, a leaky lock gate which might not let the water levels get to the places that they need to be to go up or down successfully and I've seen all sorts of fun and games go on with these locks over the years. So as we get some forward momentum again, you can see we're travelling nice and slowly, nice and carefully out of the lock here. If you're wondering what on earth this is that I'm zooming in on, that looks like a tiny little bit of a grey plastic bag that's stuck on a fence, that was actually a heron that had been stood there watching the whole of this process go on. And there's quite a few herons been around, or perhaps I've just been seeing the same one every year so often on the canal at the moment. But anyway, as you can see, we're moving out nice and slowly. Of course, you've got things like the potential for the gates, especially in windy conditions, to move around a little bit. And you don't want to get anything potentially on the side of your boat snagged on the gates because you don't want to damage your boat or the gate itself. So on some boats, I mean, on Abel's Ark, there's little metal loops that just stick off the gunwale, which is the little step around the edge of the boat for little rope fenders or rubber fenders to hang down from and they just stick out enough that it makes me think hmm that's interesting I, I don't really like that that's got a potential sort of to be caught on something just sticking up somehow but anyway as you can see we're nice and calmly successfully and easily exiting the lock here now you'll notice on the right hand side we've got this big long runoff and at the start of the video you might have seen the little channel going down the right hand side of the lock to allow the water of the canal to keep the flow going downstream even when the lock isn't in use. As obviously you would just have the canal flood when it got to the first lock if no water was allowed to pass through and continue downstream. So this is obviously a very simple, very uh, very clever way to not have a huge channel and a huge flow of water being drawn off the side of the canal above the lock. So that shouldn't cause too many uh, problems. Um, sometimes it can, depending on the wind and that, but in this case, the wind, even though the trees don't really look to be moving whatsoever, the wind is actually pushing against our right-hand side. So when I come to close the lock gate behind me, and as you can see, I'm just moving over to the left of the canal again, where you've got these temporary mooring mushrooms. Instead of using one of the mooring mushrooms, I feel confident enough, and because I've only got a walk for maybe 20 seconds at the absolute maximum between the boat and the lock gate to close it, I feel confident enough that the wind itself is going to hold the boat to the side of the canal, 
So you'll notice that I actually don't end up tying the rope at this point and just go and close the lock gate. So as you can see here I'm using one hand to film as I close the lock gate here and obviously that means I'm only holding onto the gate with one hand and leaning my weight away from the gate and you can see here how nice and smoothly it's closing and well as we pan around now there is our humble little home Narrowboat Abel's Ark and as we move away from the lock you can see the process has taken us about 20 minutes give or take and that's, as I say, a very cold, overcast, grey day in autumn, heading into winter. Very, very chilly day. I can't explain to you how cold it was. But we've had another successful lock passage, so I'm happy with that. Everyone's safe. And by everyone, I mean I'm safe, the boat's safe, and the lock is safe. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Please do consider checking out my other videos for probably some more interesting, better videos than this very slow one you've just watched. Feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that YouTube will actually tell you when I post a new video, which is always handy. If you want to help me out or you're interested to find out more, then please consider checking out my short books available for the Kindle and as a paperback over on Amazon. Visit narrowboatbooks.com, that'll take you straight to my Amazon page or find the link in the description. And in the description you'll also find links to all sorts of other stuff where I post a lot of boaty pictures over on Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram and places like that. Anyway, until the next time my friends, have an absolutely fantastic day, keep it interesting, keep it boat worthy, and of course my friends, farewell.